This is Everton Hiru Holligan. You're watching H2P Media and the Boiler Room. Bajan Farai, Adrian Green. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, you walk on there, man. I met him, I met him, man, but you walk on him. <laughs> I just keep you wicked safe. Yeah, all right, then. So let me get it started. Let me start the menu for it wrong way. Let me show the video. You doors off? Mm-hmm. Walk on You had a hard life. What guy know I'm a bad dream? I meditate him, brother. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, he yeah, was on a meditation. She saw mm-hmm. me disturb him, man. Because, you know, these, these conversations would be stressful for me, you know. Oh, these, show, these shows, these shows, the last one we do. Yeah. So I gotta prepare my spirit for this one, you know. Well, all right. Because, uh, you know, we like you like it. That's the last time we discuss, you know, if and uh, how we can handle politics in the boiler room. Yeah, we ain't want the ground standing as the, the normal thing that we yeah. see up on a platform. And to tell you the honest truth, I don't know if I could deal personally with most politicians in here that's the truth because <laughs> my, my I don't I don't have a positive um, vibe towards politicians and the political it's that, it's arena that, it's, that. it's bad it's bad, it's I, bad. I, I view the whole the whole situation very negatively yeah. right and anybody who's been involved in it a long time no disrespect to, to them as an individual mm. but for me they're part of the, the bad experiences that you had are really good that you that not that i've had that i've observed i've witnessed mm. this the, the energy that i've because witnessed. you're going to just observe actually wrong where you live where yeah. they're supposed to you can go there because the thing is i'm on the outside right yeah. and i from the outside looking in i don't like what i see looking in right right and i don't like what hearing about what's going on mm. but then People, nobody don't come out and say nothing. So it's always be rumor, right. and conjecture, and you know he shares, he says, she, she, she yeah. say, yeah. and you don't know, you know. So I don't like. I, I, I don't. I feel as though if someone who are seasoned in the political game were to come into the boiler room, they could not be <laughs> honest and open. Yeah, right. About the facts it, that about about yeah. their what they've seen and heard, mm-hmm. like. The game is just so dirty that they can't come out and tell it's you how dirty it is. It's talking transparency, but... It ain't transparent. It ain't nothing transparent. It ain't transparent. But this is the season for politics in Barbados, and, you know, all of us are involved, whether we like it or not. Really true. You know? It it's affects us. We to elect right. the next officials that should govern the country. So, what we're doing is that we had... We are having persons in here who are not yet in the game. Right. Who are seeking to get into the political game right. for the they first take, time? I, do you, I can use that word "tainted" or that's an edgy word. They tainted word. Yeah. 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 I will use it. It's edgy, but I will edgy, use it. Right, right. They I will use it. Without, without I will use it. Is what we know as politics. Yeah. Um, so, and I commend them for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because as much as people talk about politics negatively. That is how the world runs. That's how we run. Mm-hmm. Um, if the good, if the good people stay out, you left it for the dregs yeah. to run. Mm-hmm. Right, right, it's true. So we taking a chance that some of these people who coming in here for the, oh. who jumping in the fray. Yeah, jumping. Remember when they ask you a question a while ago? Oh Lord! It give you time to think. Right. Mm-hmm. See how we can work and ask you. It give you time right? to think. You have the floor, sir. Again, I wanna, I wanna start by saying, you know. This is a very good friend of mine. Yeah, I, I someone know, I, who I, I know, know yeah. for a while, someone right. who I respect. Man, what you were going to do saying like this? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Heru, good you good have night. the floor. Sir. Heru Holligan of Heru the, Heru the United Progressive good Party. Night. Good night. Welcome good to the day. boiler room, brother. Good night, world. Yes. Yeah. As far as it's worldwide. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, the room is worldwide. Mm-hmm. Yeah. United Progressive Party. Um, new institution. Mm-hmm. Um, I call it a human rights movement, believe it or not. A human rights movement? That's what keeps me grounded within the movement. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I, I grew up hearing and believing and thinking the same thing about politics as well. Um, and truthfully, it was only until I heard Lynette 
explain what her vision is for developing democracy mm -hmm. or improving democracy and and um, how she see a country as small as this but rich with people and resources within the people um, could transform and become a nation that is um, looked up to. And I, I kind of gel with what she was saying, building communities, making sure that you support people, making sure that you get um, everybody to grow and develop at the same pace. Those kind of things I liked because it fit in line with my activism, things that I've been doing for over 25 years now in all the movements that I've been a part of. So I listened and I went to meet Lynette and I listened to her again. And it was interesting for me, like I've told one or two people you know, I pulled up in my Subaru Tribeca mm -hmm. and I went and I introduced myself to this woman. Woman that I've heard about all these years but never really had an opportunity to get up close and talk to her. And it was a very easy conversation. Very respectful, very open, very... And I was like, this is interesting. And then at the end of the meeting, you know, she jumped in her old pop down. I call it pop down Toyota Cruel and I jumped in my, my truck back and drive away. But no, I'm saying that because even for perceptions that you create of people, sometimes they're not, it's not real. Mm -hmm. And so as I emerged and got deeper into the political arena, I realized that a lot of what I was growing up believing and a lot of what I was hearing and um, heard people talking about as it relates to politics and politicians, I started questioning because that's how I live my life. I have to continuously revisit my ideas. That's when people ask me, you know, I say, well, I, I, I know that I don't know enough to know. And I know that I got to continue knowing. Because if you're not in it, you don't understand it. But I don't mean that you don't have an idea. You can still have an idea. But the closer I got to it, I realized that it's something that I should have gotten into every since. But nothing before it's time, huh? Mm -hmm. Um, when you are sitting down and putting hours on top of hours and looking at policies and revisit, reviewing policies and trying to create a way to improve the, the livelihood of people, in essence, that's what we do. In essence, that's what it's all about. In essence, oh, that's what you're supposed to do. Well, that's what my experience has been in this movement. But your experience is, with, mm -hmm. is within a party which has been formed for the first time, right. which has never held government. Right. Mm -hmm. So your experience is very different from somebody who has been in the game right. with one of the, the traditional parties for a long time. Well, I don't know. Okay. I would have to take... Right. I would assume say. so. Though. Yeah, because they may actually be doing the same thing too. Okay. And even as I canvass, you know, sometimes you knock on doors and you may find young people who are very antagonistic about politics and sometimes I just have to get them into a corner. I remember canvassing a young man recently, you know, he came out dressed in his shirt and tie, so I assume that he's part of corporate Barbados, but very young. I assume he was one of the Harrison College or one of those students as well, because he was very strong in his stance, that he doesn't like politicians and politics, but he seemed very educated as well. And so I started to explain some basic things and you know, even though you may think that, because you know, that's the, the common thing, they don't do nothing. Mm -hmm. But truthfully, that's not absolutely true. You know, if we're being honest with each other, you're looking at, you know, or they don't do, you're looking at, you know, education, which they consider free, but it's not free. You know, these, these are things that are taxed. And, and if you, you're sick, you can be agents, you can go to the hospital and get taken care of. You may not get taken care of immediately, or you may have to wait an hour, I mean, a, a day or two in some cases. But there are institutions that are being, that are in place as a result of politics that looks after the well-being of people. I'm not saying that they're not flaws and faults. But I'm also saying that there was a time in Barbados, sorry to, to run it. There was a no, time in Barbados going. where you used to hear about contractors, people overseas who send in money to get things built and contractors will run away with their money or you know, spending money in, inappropriately and then you always hear about lawyers who do the same thing. So there's this is the same society that the people who are politicians come from. So if you have mediocrity and if you have um, you know, corruption and dysfunctionality within the society in general, then you may find some of that within the same political arena, just as much as you can find it 
at a regular business that you're going, whether it's Price Golden or something like that. So what's the difference between these people? The only difference is that the public elect them and they're supposed to have high morals and standards and run office. And I, I would say I can only refer back to the institution that I'm a part of, which has allowed me the opportunity to rethink the other institutions as well. So you're saying that you have a better view of the Barbados Labour Party and the Democratic Labour Party I can't Party say I have a better view of before. them. I, I, I can say that I am a bit more tolerant in processing or revisiting how I would have seen these institutions before, even though I would have had challenges. Mm -hmm. You know, I grew up in, in, in hustle, in town, sell, setting up, selling books and that kind of, that's how we, I emerged back into the society after I came home from the States. I was on the street selling books and, and you know, talking to people about health and that kind of stuff. And, you know, I used to see police come and they, they mess up the whole vending space and, you know, stop people from vending and stuff. And it, that used to make me angry, you know. So there are things that I've seen in both administrations that would make me wholesale say, these people are both the people. Mm -hmm. But is it really true, you know? And I'm willing to, to actually explore my own personal feelings about this. And given that I'm in this institution right now, where I see young and older people, people who are wise and smart, sit down for hours and invest in seeing how things can work better in our country, I feel like we take a, a beat in that. In some cases, politicians deserve, but in a lot of cases, we just need to be more discerning with how we, crit how we critique. Because mm -hmm. it ain't easy work. I, I, I realize that. It can't be easy work when you have to run an entire country, you know, and you have people saying, this is not the way to do it, this is the way to do it, and then you have to employ from the same group of people that we say, you know, whether it's the civil service or whoever it is, that the same people who were born and raised in this society, who come up within this society, and things don't work the way it's supposed to work in some cases. You know, it's, it's so for me, mm -hmm. looking at it, I always say this. What I see is politicians, I think rather than just winning the vote and then you escaping the far beyond, I think a lot of them got to do a lot of revisiting to the same neighborhoods year or months mm -hmm. after months after so, months, so, so having an office there. So a lot of them just disappear. Mm -hmm. And that's been something that's been going on years after years after years after years right now you know coming in mm -hmm. are you going mm -hmm. to be any different than Wait, previous there are some entrenched ideas and thoughts that the public is infested with um and i believe that it could be because of the 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 you know these institutions have been around for a while and a lot of times as i be a bit more discerning i can see a lot of technology in the application within politics as well. Like, for example, you will hear all the time, well, you know, my party ain't in power, so I can't do nothing. The people, yeah. people, the electorate will literally tell you this. Well, you mean he can't do nothing when he was in power? I actually hear that. So, after today. so those are things that I would like, that I feel is needs to be dispelled. So your position that you have politicians who literally once the elections is over, in most cases, uh, as I know and as I've heard, you don't see them. And because of how these older institutions have been entrenched, I would assume that people will follow along the lines of what used to happen before within the institution, within whether the, the, the other two older institutions. So when I got involved, I recognized that given the time that we're in right now, it can be business as usual. In order to create the the in order to lead the country out of the crisis that it's in, you cannot have um, politicians not being on the road, not being in the trenches, not creating opportunities for young people. Not, I mean, you you talking about having an office, but in most cases, your office is just really going to be there. But you need to be on the streets. You need to be where people are, and fishing them out or you need to have direct linkages to people who are in the streets to help fish out the geniuses within our communities to help propel the society so it can be business as usual i know that's what has been happening i i don't support it at all so but that's that's my point mm -hmm. 
And I agree with you 100%. It can't mm-hmm. be business as usual. Mm-hmm. Um, so while I hear you defending mm-hmm. the usual politicians, mm-hmm. you're also saying the usual politicians have dropped the ball. Or, or is that not what you're saying? Or are you saying the ball change and let me just know what to do with it? Let me know what to do with it. So that's what you want to do. I'm still so stuck at me defending politicians. I, I know how that You happened. have been. You have been. No, mm-hmm. I, I think what I've... That's how it sounds at least. What across. I've highlighted is uh-huh. how my personal experience has been transformed. Mm-hmm. And being that I recognize what has to go into the, the work, I am not saying that. And I did say that this is how it's been entrenched based on the two older organizations, but it can't continue. So I can't defend them mm-hmm. knowing where we're at. And I, I'm not defending them because they didn't do the work initially either. I'm just saying that I, I recognize how this thing it really unfolds and I choose not to be a part of the, the movement where we're just going to criticize before having a better understanding. But criticism is needed. You think that the people that criticize don't have a good, have a good understanding? I think... And if I think some people do. I don't mm-hmm. think everybody does. Okay. I don't of, think I of, did. Of course, of course. Yeah, not, I don't think I Not did. everybody who has a criticism right. will have a good understanding. Right. But that don't mean that the criticisms are valid, mm-hmm. are not valid. So, 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 so I, what I'm trying to say is for you to say that politicians have done nothing is not absolutely true. While I understand Ma, it we know context. how Beijing is taught, but man. Beijing is said, ma, you never do nothing for me. You never do nothing. You understand. Yeah, yeah. You understand how people is taught, though. I understand how people is taught, but I understand the impact on the young minds. Right. And how it affects the young minds. And it's not absolutely true. And I think we need to be a bit more um, correct in how we, we process information and how we pass on information. Mm-hmm. Right? And again, this has nothing to do with with, with um, defending. This have this have to do with progress, and looking towards the future. If you're saying the people didn't do nothing, but yet still, there's so much that has been done, it's unfair. But when people when a bear tell you about somebody and do nothing, you talking about they, 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 they do nothing. Listen, nothing. I am walking the streets with young men who know nothing so much about about what really goes on behind closed doors. But you doors. know why that is. You know why that is? Yes. The reason for that is that's, that's the nothing that the politicians didn't do in that's, terms of educating the public and, and creating a political atmosphere. Where so so while I agree with you, mm. you see, this is the thing. We can agree, mm-hmm. but I can also have a diversion, a position to, yeah, to that to, agreement. I'm trying to say diversion. Yeah. So, so we have a society mm. in general that has challenges. Right. It was birthed out of colonialism and all that stuff there's challenges within the society so we also have other um, professions that drops the ball right there are teachers who drop the ball there are principals who drop the ball there are officers in in in, in the public service who got who dropped the ball Ma, you're making me nervous people, man, no but i'm saying the but truth you know there's consequences as well you're making me nervous ball. but and then there is the leaders who drop more than balls. So I'm just saying to you that while you criticize here, if we're not discerning enough to recognize that the entire society has dysfunctionalities that also needs to be checked, then we're not being fair. I can agree I can agree with that, right? We're not being I can, fair. I can agree with that. No, I'm not saying don't don't knock on politicians because they need some whipping. But I I nervous. <laughs> I tell you I tell you I tell you I'm nervous because you here not you're not speaking as a citizen, average citizen no. Mm-hmm. You are Correct. speaking as a potential Canada. leader of the can, leader of this country, a potential member of parliament, right? And that's all as well to, as a citizen. You're an ordinary citizen no more. You it's see, to see, that, that they're making me too. nervous. <laughs> they're making me nervous, <laughs> boss. Yeah, well, they're making me nervous. <laughs> <laughs> around this time, politicians mouth be sweet like molasses water. Mm-hmm. Because what I, when I listen to our politicians talk, especially mm-hmm. in the last ten years, mm-hmm. what I have is been hearing is that me. kind of talk. Oh, don't yeah. blame me, man. Wanna bad too? Correct. Man, listen. Wanna got some blame? Wanna got so many blame? blame I, 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 you know, a lot of things got changed. I wanna need to pull up one of the socks. Mm-hmm. Listen, the country this, the people this. Adrian, you know I'm into health. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. You know that I've been seeing clients and I see hundreds and hundreds of clients. Yeah. And I see clients who have all types of issues. And in addressing issues, you don't always get the clients to follow through on what they need to do. Right. Am I to take all that blame? 
You, you, uh, as a matter of health, I can, I can do it. Life. No, but seriously, uh, you can't, but that's what we said. We're not saying that, like, right? Like, good, so let me move on. Now. All so, the so, so, for me, so for me, I think we need, I don't think we have, we've done enough justice and creating balance within the conversation. So, what we do is we propel a situation where the younger minds are not nurtured enough. To a better understanding. That ain't got, and that not, has, that ain't you got nothing. Have, you Whoa, have, you're making me vex. I want you to get vexed because you can't have 30 people, 30 people, minus 300,000 people, and expect the 30 people. The, that, that ain't got nothing to do. Job. That ain't got nothing to do with the tone of the conversation. You got politicians in this country that is going to go into communities and give people things for yes. votes. Yes. Right? Yes. And then you got. People from the private sector and people all over telling Bajans, man, the problem with Barbados is Bajans living, Bajans feel above, entitled. Yes. I want to live in above what I mean. But just so you, we got a prime so minister we, that just so you are aware. Just so you are aware. I am not disagreeing with anything you say. But I think I know you're not, right? Good. But I think that you're pointing in the wrong direction. No, I'm not. The no, direction. I'm not. I'm not pointing in the wrong direction. I'm trying to say that. While I agree with you, mm -hmm. here is something else that is really spoken of, which can also, and because it's really spoken of, it also helps to mislead the future. I, I understand, though. I, yeah, I, that's I, all I, I'm saying. I appreciate that you want, no, you want to raise the tone of the conversation. Let me trust some lashes. Okay. Because lashes need to be thrown. Otherwise, there won't be so many different Beat political them, institutions, don't kill them. no? No, a lot of them need beating. You know why I can no, appreciate I said, what you're saying? Beat them, but don't yeah. kill them. Why I can appreciate it? Because it's like when we had Marsha Keller from the BLP on last time, mm -hmm. you know, and I, I can appreciate what you're saying because I felt at the time too that I really didn't want it to turn into a DLP mm -hmm. lashing conversation, mm -hmm. even though I believe the DLP deserve a lot of lashes. Yes. I understand. You want to raise the, the level of conversation, if I, if I get you correctly. We want to be honest, which is something that you always would talk about. Have fear. And fear, and I, I would like for the lashes to share mm -hmm. because the public need to share the lashes, and they need to get beat. But we also need to know how we transform now out of this state that we are in. Are we prepping the minds of young people to see this, f this institution of politics the way it should be seen, and then nurture those minds who are up, who are coming up now? to be future leaders for them to realize what their role and responsibility is. Because that has not happened with the current leaders that we have. They're there, but I don't feel as though they've been nurtured the way they needed to be nurtured so they know what their true role and responsibilities are. Can we upgrade the educational system so the youths can understand that they need to be changes? Because we're stuck in the same cycle. Mm -hmm. They're learning the same thing over and over. Politicians repeating the same thing over and over, and that's we keep ending up at. They got to go beyond that point. They got to pull past that point, whereas that yo everybody could get them sure the work done. They said they keep saying like, for instance, there's what some of my budgets and them be saying. That's work from a lot of men is coming in shock. So you you only got to mention something political. Like yeah, somebody knew someone said, oh, but you know what's like, but what is often here is as more often here more bad than good and it's necessary you see sometimes a, we, we, but we have negative and positive you see a lot of negativity towards yeah. politicians and then we really got to take off that cloak yeah the, and so, 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 so it's, it's true so, so when when I started this movement I, I had to rationalize it in my head I, 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 I had to tell myself you know this movement for me because I didn't want to use the word politician you know, and I'm still playing with it in my head, but it's really, I call my, I used to my, I said to say to people and say to myself, you know, um, I, I'm a, I, should I win my seat? I would be a paid community activist, right? That was, that was my own rationalization for wanting to do this. I have an opportunity to be on the ground, to impact the lives of people. That's something I've been doing for, for over 20 years now in my professional field and otherwise impacting the lives of people. Now I have more time, energy and effort to be on the ground and know what people need and and also create programs so that people can be better. So we can build big people, which is what actually is the 
fuel for the economy, the fuel for you know reducing crime, the fuel for um, building strong families. That's what it is, building big people. So if you are on the streets, on the ground, on the blocks, working with creating opportunities, developing programs for people to see their true potential, you know, and to help with nurturing parents and so they can understand what they now need to pass on to their youth. And this for me was all based on understanding history, where we, who we were, what we have done before and what we now can do. So for me, that's where, we, what, where I am at with this. But now I, I'm moving forward to being more comfortable using the word because it's a couple and I recognize that we have done a, a disservice to our own people in many different ways and we need to really change that. So the education system needs to be upgraded, totally. So I, I, I hear you. you, you rec if, I, if I understand you correctly, I try to keep my cool. You don't and, have to and, do it, Adrian. And, no, I have to do it. I? I have to. You're my mm. brother. I want you to be my brother when we left here. <laughs> <Time to change. laughs> so you you entered the political arena with misgivings about politics and politicians, and you had to try and rationalize in your mind and, and distance yourself from that image mm -hmm. that you had a politician of mm -hmm. politicians. Mm -hmm. And now you're saying to yourself, you know, there has been some good done, good done in the name of politicians and in the name of politics, and there's no shame for me, meaning you, mm -hmm. to get involved and to step in. Because you do hear a lot of people saying, no, I ain't getting in there, boy, that, that's, that's, that's too filthy. Right. I ain't doing it, I ain't getting involved right. with it. But then you, you get good people, people with ideas, people with, who are brilliant, who run away from the institution. Right. And then you don't get the necessary changes required. If the good people run if away. If the good people mm -hmm. run away from the institution. Mm -hmm. And if we continue to perpetuate that it is such a bad thing when it really isn't in reality. It's or how it doesn't you manage. have to be. It, 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 no, it doesn't have to be correct. Right. It's about managing the affairs of the people within the nation and ensuring that everyone in the nation have an opportunity to progress and develop to their fullest potential. That's what the institution of, of politics ideally should be. And we don't want good people to run away from the institution. And we've been mistook with people who are opportunistic, people who are connected to a particular party and because they're connected and they're following they chase and they you know eventually they become a candidate but really have very little depth of what they're going to impart on the people other than creating this parasitic type of relationship which is what you talked about earlier where you know they run in the neighborhoods and they spend this amount of money or pay out this or you know or create this corned beef and biscuit culture which is something that i grew up with you know, and hearing about, and I know when the politicians come because you're just going to shop and drink free. And now I'm going to shops, and because I had the shop man telling me, my you go out by saying, hey, I don't buy drinks. You know, that's you not don't why buy drinks. You're stepping, you're that's stepping not up. Why I'm here. I'm yeah. here. Let's have a conversation about parenting. You know, I, I buy books. You know, I want to have a conversation about how you should treat your, your partner how we should treat our children. That's the conversations I want to have when I get to canvas and when I go on blocks. But I can still hear you. Watch but this. Don't, no, but, this is, you, but this is where we need to go. What you see with that response? Mm -hmm. You'd be shocked. I this, get respect. There's actually more. I get respect for that response. But you know not respect in a vote. Huh? You know not respect in a That's vote. cool. But that's all right. Because I got to see ahead. I can't just see no. So if I don't get this vote no, that doesn't mean that I can't continue to build relationships with the people that I've already started to build relationships with. So my intent is not to create and continue to foster this negative relationship, which then demoralizes the society. So if it means that I don't get a vote, fine. But it doesn't mean that I ain't gonna come back here and I ain't gonna sit down and I ain't slam some dominoes. I ain't gonna have conversation about growth and development and upliftment. It doesn't mean that I ain't gonna come in and say, okay, well, I, I, somebody just messaged me about work here. You know, here's, I know that I, from canvassing you, I know you're a plumber, I know you're good at this and I got this here to do, or I know somebody I got this to do, here's what this is. But we gotta literally up the thing. That's the truth. And so that's how I've been canvassing, that's how I've been working. And people would say to me, well, you know, you got left hand. I mean, some blocks, man, tell me straight up, you know. But you know, the man, 
Your man want drinks. I don't buy drinks. I ain't got the money for drinks right now. Man, you, you living in a fantasy world, is what some people say to me. You live in a fantasy world. You know, it's money that's got to talk about here. That's all right. I think this is a real world I in. You know, one guy said to me, well, you know, um, man, but here hungry, you don't know that. I said, but this is St. George, boss. And if a man but here hungry and use the L down the block, that means we have to have a conversation because something going wrong. Because I see them bread fruit trees all around me and we need to work now on how we can plan and build so people are not hungry. And then you don't ask me for food though, you ask me for drinks. <laughs> because it's the culture that because somebody coming around running for office to go out buy drinks. And I'm not saying that it's something wrong with drinks, it's a way of socializing and stuff like that, but there's that demand that just because you hear this is what politicians before you used to do. But no, though, I really want to talk about your child, your parenting, you know, I want to talk about that kind of things. Let me have a conversation about that here. Yeah. All right, well, I will give my disclaimer as well because Hiro is a long-term family friend. I've learned a lot about health, a lot about health from Hiro. So I give him a lot of credit where that is concerned. And we've also had a history where we don't always see eye to eye on every topic, but we've always been able to maintain that respect for each other, regardless of whatever our beliefs are. So I have a lot of respect for Heru as a person. I'm now having to learn about Heru as a candidate, mm -hmm. because I've realized that sometimes that's me two completely different people. So I hearing you with the conversation, I don't agree with everything because I have found that if a politician does this amount of good, it is going to be known. The media is going to be called in. People are going to be aware. So I don't think that politicians don't communicate well in terms of if they've done something good. The problem I have is the communication when things do not go well. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lack of communication mm -hmm. as to the hard work that you say goes into a lot of the things they do. There's a lack of communication as to why things are not working in Barbados. And there's this passy potato blame game that goes on instead of saying, I am the one that's in power, so this is what has to be done. And maybe it's that you're not aware of the right communication channels. Maybe it's that you don't have the training to be able to say or handle the public where these things are concerned. But a lot of things are held to the chest. They're secret public can't know this and then you wonder why the public has to hold on to rumors and false information to be able to fill in the blanks yeah so there's a lack of respect culture. It's yeah entrenched within the institutions that so that's why i was concerned when i heard how the conversation started because i wasn't sure if that culture of you know you can't completely blame politicians was going to continue but i am hoping that there is going to be a change in terms of when the ball is dropped because mm -hmm. the ball will be dropped if mm -hmm. y'all got into power. Mm -hmm. That is an inevitability. Mm -hmm. But how it is handled mm -hmm. when it is dropped is what will make the difference. Yeah. I mean, I, I totally feel you. Um, again, I can't speak for the other two parties. And I think that's one of the good things about me being here now. Mm -hmm. well, one of the reasons why you're here. <laughs> well, one of the reasons why you're here. Yeah, we stay clean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Clean yeah, hands, yeah, pure heart too. Right, right. It's also one of the reasons why I decided not to join one of the other parties. Not mm -hmm. to say that things haven't happened in both administrations that mm -hmm. were beneficial to the public, mm -hmm. but there are things that are known to not be beneficial as well. Mm -hmm. um, I do agree. Um, I think, like you said, when when good things are happening, you know, you the media follows and you highlight all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Bad things are happening. What I've seen, which is poor leadership, the, there's been no step up and say, but listen, we thought we had this here solved, mm -hmm. but we got to go back to the drawing board. Mm -hmm. Bear with us, people. If any of y'all got ideas that can help me fix this here, because we really button in a, you know, mm -hmm. let me see who can help and come forward. So the public has been left out of the management of the country over the years. That's been my experience, mm -hmm. you know, and then you hear a lot and I can only speak to hearing a lot about all the studies that are being done and and all the different um, to help inform how certain institutions or sectors function but then the studies are swept under the table or pushed 
back and not given the, 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 the chance to see light. Not implemented. And not implemented. So we have implementation deficit. Um, these are things that I'm well aware of, that I've heard of. Um, I'm hoping, and I, mean, I, I don't think, based on how we've set up our governance manifesto, mm -hmm. which I know we don't really want to talk about all that stuff, but is full transparency. So there's, there's, there's a portal that you log on and you see everything that's happening as it relates to the management of the country. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit yeah. about the manifesto. Though. Talk mm -hmm. a little bit about what the UPP is offering yeah. mm -hmm. that is different. That's different, correct. Well, I think the, the, what drew me to the UPP was the movement to govern from the ground up, a people-centered movement. That's what, uh, that's what I was attached to. When the UPP launched the the uh, new economy manifesto, so we launched a new economy manifesto, the governance manifesto, and then the the um, the city manifesto, mm -hmm. which is a you know, then it actually has a full manifesto for the city. So there are ideas for the city to transform the city. We have the green manifesto come in. Uh, there's a social service manifesto. So there's all these different manifestos that are being worked on as we speak. Um, one of them, which is very important, which I think is the, 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 the new economy manifesto, which, is, which looks at um, creating a different sector and actually uh, giving it a heading and allocating resources to the creative sector. And we find that that's one way we can diversify the economy to generate more resources. Now, I'm not the economist within the group, mm -hmm. but the economists within the group and the researchers within the group have found that they can generate somewhere around $3 billion into the economy from just taking a small chunk of that creative sector. That's looking at uh, music industry, fashion, software development, um, copywriting, all of these, and putting it under one umbrella and just uh, facilitating it through government portals to make sure then that we can sell our services to the world, sell our creativity to the world, and actually have resources that's put to it and have, uh, as you know, Lynette, the leader of the party, she's, she was very, um, she, she was running the international business sector, mm -hmm. and she has spoken towards the same foundation that we use to build the international business sector is what we then use to, to promote um, the creative economy. So that's one way in terms of helping to bring some money into the country. Then there is the governance manifesto, which looks at how we would change up some of these current structures to ensure that people have a voice within the society. So ensure that the NGOs, non-governmental organizations, and charitable organizations actually have access to government property, you know, for meetings and stuff like that. If you want to have a meeting, you, want, you, you have access. It's your property anyway, mm -hmm. taxpayers' dollars. So you have access to those things, making sure that they have the support, making sure that that's connected to the, the, the Prime Minister's office and that um, those organizations would have, uh, I think it's meetings, monthly meetings or meetings every six months with the elected officials to help advance their causes, to help strengthen their governance and so that they can get into the communities then to do the work that they were created to do. Because we do have a lot of charitable organizations that offer some really good uh, services to the society, but they need, a lot of times, they don't have grant writing support, they don't have um, the support in terms of resources to be able to carry out their work. And so we feel like it is our responsibility, if we're in government, to make sure that all of these NGOs, once they've gone through the training processes and they meet the, the, the protocols that they need to meet to ensure that they can effectively run, then they need to have access to the resources of the taxpayers to carry out their duties, and that's one way we can help to make you sure that fund the NGOs out of taxpayer dollars. And help them in their development. So they get a subvention, but they also get support. Support for writing their grants, support for managing. So you, they get training so they can manage their different portfolios within the organization properly, whether it's accounting or whatever the case is, so that they can carry out their responsibilities within the community. Because we recognize that the only way forward is to strengthen communities. That's the only way forward. You gotta, you, you know, you gotta be able to sculpt the creative genius within communities, and the, who's gonna do that? The people in the communities and those organizations that are set up within the communities to see who are the Rihanna's or the DJ Puffies or whoever else within these communities. You know, the the big the big issue that everyone talks about is the economy, mm -hmm. and the argument is, will come. How are you gonna pay for all this? Because the yep. country ain't got no money. How are you gonna 
how how everybody want to know like, how you gonna fix the economy? So so you can't do that unless you got money. I mean, country got the money. So we know that right now for tourism, there is a significant amount of money that's put into marketing Barbados as a tourist destination right now. Our proposal is to cut that by five million dollars and put it into those sectors and those areas that we need to now develop. And the beautiful thing about the creative economy is that it doesn't need infrastructure. You don't need to go and build big hotels and stuff. I mean, right now we're in somebody's apartment. You know, all we need is the equipment and the creative genius of the people. Some people could just stay at home in their bedroom and create applications and games and stuff right in their homes. But they need to know that there's a support. You know, just yesterday I did an interview with a young man who said to me he had the prototype for a cell phone. Barbadian manufactured and created, you know, and was ready to get it launched. But funding. And when he said how much money it would have taken, I kind of laughed. I was like, I think he said between five to seven thousand dollars or something, or fifteen thousand dollars. And I was like, what? That's, that's all it takes? That's all right. It was. It was. That's it was, the price of the yeah, cell phone. No, no, that was the price to get the project launched and have the prototypes built. Okay. With getting the parts and everything shipped in, and then the training for the for the. You know, he just mentioned this to me yesterday. I just, that. and so, that alone in itself is something that's worthy of support. But, you know, he met with this buddy, met with that buddy, met, but there was this dance around him. So there are a lot of creative people within Barbados who get that same, who need that support. So the five million dollars, as you were asking, how do we get this money? The five million dollars that's being um, remo shifted from tourism into this sector, that helps to offset some of the issues there in terms of funding. Um, Lynette has spoken about looking at, because we know that right now, financially, economically, it's a crisis. Everybody knows this. You know, foreign reserves are down. Um, there are bills that need to be paid, <laughs> debts that need to be paid, and there are no little debts. You know, there are million dollar debts that's coming up that needs to be met, and um, we need to be in negotiations with uh, international firms. We've spoken about the IMF without fear. You know, mm -hmm. it's not politically sound to speak about IMF. People think that, oh gosh, the world is going to come to an end, but in terms of their, their in interest rates and and, and the level of discipline that has to be applied is something that we need. The IMF some is level. something that we need? Not, I'm not saying the IMF is something. The IMF is an option. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, once, I mean, there's some things you, unfortunately... It's a legitimate how, option. It's a legitimate option. But unfortunately, there's some things that you can't say when you're not in government because of how governance people is practiced have right now. up a fear you know I mean? for the IMF. So as right. long as you say those words, people throw their minds back to the days of Sandy and exactly. the 8% cut right. and horrible things happened and the reality of it was something they just didn't want to injure. Right. So it's as soon as same. people hear that mm -hmm. and the circumstances that we are right now are mm -hmm. far worse yes. than when we went to the first, the IMF the, the first, first time. Yeah. So persons understandably have mm -hmm. a fear. Right. But it is the same fear a child has when they hear they have to take medicine. Right. So the thing is that, um, like I was saying, because of how governance is practiced, we don't know all the details mm -hmm. as to where our money is and what mm -hmm. our money needs to go to. Because You don't know what you can see if you were to get into our office. Correct. Or too much, which is a kind of a problem. Mm -hmm. Because we need to know. The public needs to know. Public should public know. Public does not know, know, though. Right, it's true. Because is, even, I was, I think it was this morning, actually, or yesterday morning, I was listening to the radio and I was hearing... Mm -hmm. The Minister of Finance talking about how he don't see there being a problem with the fact that the foreign reserves are down. Right. Things are still being done. Bills are still being paid. XYZ is still happening. So... But you know how not And that's literally you, how he ended it. But like, I, you know how not for you and Jeremy Stevens and some of these other um, activists out there and, you know, people wouldn't even know what the foreign reserves is really and but, truly. But the that, average but person the problem walking is the street and really checking the for The Minister of Finance... But has more right. credibility mm -hmm. than a me or a Jeremy or anybody else because of their position in itself. So when some the average person hears a minister saying that five weeks of our reserves is not a problem and that the banks didn't have a problem with it, which is not necessarily true because mm -hmm. they had to give up their foreign reserves kicking and screaming. Mm -hmm. Nobody wants to just give up foreign exchange just like that, mm -hmm. which is the only reason we're at five weeks right now. Right. Yeah. But. When you hear these things, it's difficult to be able to say, okay, 
if this is what he's saying, what is the real position that we're going to be getting ourselves into? Do we right. have a plan in case it is much worse than is actually purported? Right. So we did say that we would, you know, consider the IMF and, and there are other international agencies that we can consider um, to get some resources from and to try to find a way to plug some of the holes and then rebuild. So in the process of plugging, we have to build, we have to grow the economy and taxes is not the answer. Mm -hmm. You know, the economy has to grow. All the sectors um, and all the ministries have to be responsible and making sure that there's growth within those ministries. So you should have growth within the Ministry of Agriculture, Ministry of Tourism. So these ministries need to have some growth coming in as well. There's, there are like many businesses within the business of government you're, you're in a sense. You're saying politicians in these ministries ain't doing nothing? <laughs> That's pretty much what's happening. You know, they're, they're not... They're not running the ministries the way they need to be run, and and that's unfortunate. That's what it seems like. I'm not there, but that's what it seems like to me. There are two non-financial issues that I think sometimes contribute <laughs> just as heavily to the fact that we don't have any money. Don't have any money. There's this ease of doing business issue. Correct. The number of people who message and tell me how much months right. it took just yes. to get a license to do a business or how much months yes. it took to do this month. So All we, that time you sit here, no, you're losing money. You know? right. we've, we've, we put that in our governance manifesto, uppbarbados.org, which is information technology, using mm -hmm. the, the computer systems to ensure that the ease of doing business can so how be you buy these, significant. You buying these computer systems with money that you get from... You, you know that there are people here in Barbados mm -hmm. who, who develop software. Mm -hmm. You know, I actually had the opportunity to meet one gentleman the other day who I was using the software from the States who actually built, built softwares for, 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 for all types of institutions across Barbados, all types of businesses. Mm -hmm. So the potential is here. They're just not given the support, you know. So you think the technology will help to ease the issues that we have with everything And also helps with transparency. Up. Yeah. Because there's, there's less face-to-face -face and the protocols are more direct. And... Then the other issue is the court system. I got I got enough issues, but mm. the you court know I can't system. You all of them, though. Well, everyone's you can answer because <laughs> right. you know, it's okay to say you don't know. Right. I would rather I somebody say they don't know, know than to make yeah. up an answer and give me yeah. a lot of BS because yeah. I can't work with that. No, I, I, I agree with you. Um, I, I had a situation I was dealing with today with the residents of my con, um, constituency, St. George North, or we're dealing with a stench mm -hmm. coming from this, this dump that has been mm -hmm. set up. And while I was talking to the, the chief environmental officer about the condition on behalf of the people of St. George North mm -hmm. who, are, who are suffering from this, um, some of the responses were literally, yes, there's, there's a court case pending. And, and it's been going on for a while now. So then I said, well, can we have a timeline that I can at least let people know when they're gonna have a chance to breathe again. Mm -hmm. And the response was like, well, I can't say. I said, well, is it gonna take another year or another year and a half? Because people literally are inhaling stench and can't go to their homes, Correct. can't open up windows and stuff like this. So there were, there were several issues that I would have picked up mm -hmm. within that conversation that shows me that one, our, our ministries are not functioning the way they're supposed to. There were things that she said to me, um, and I don't, I don't know if I want to talk about it in totality here, but there were things that she said to me which made me, it was very clear that we have a high level of mediocrity within our ministries that mm -hmm. need to be fixed. Mm -hmm. You know? That is why <clears throat> people will say politicians ain't doing nothing. Because mm -hmm. if you wake up in the morning and it stinks, mm -hmm. you go home at night from work and it stinks. Mm -hmm. Then you wake up again. Now, here's the problem. Oh, here's loads of other problem. Mm -hmm. Smelling it is one thing. Developing um, medical conditions mm -hmm. is a whole other thing. Because if you consistently keep smelling stuff with that, you know eventually something inside mm -hmm. can decide that, look, nah, that ain't for me. So, so so for me, being a, a health activist, you know, and having to, because I drive through my constituency and I get a whiff of it, and I, I have to think about the children who live close enough who are whiffing it every day, and I know that every time you smell something, it mixes into the blood, mm -hmm. and it changes the chemistry of the body. So for me, I was very angry in trying to get this resolved, even beyond just politics, because when somebody burns stuff above my house, I just really feel upset. I just go looking for them. 
You know what I mean? But then to sit in an office where these people are supposed to be in charge, mm -hmm. I didn't sit with the minister. I sat with the those in responsible, but I didn't sit with the minister. But sat with them and hear they know what a potential resolution could be. But the only body who can advise that was the minister. And my question was, well, why isn't the minister advising this? Are we going to wait for somebody to die or um, for it to have a leave a stain on the residents for a period of time, whether it's some sort of respiratory ailment that now is, you know, people dying from whatever cancer or whatever because they inhale this stuff. You know, I even asked for air quality test today. Can we do an air quality test? And I was told that we don't have the equipment here to do it. But then I, I reckon, you know, so, but, and this wasn't somebody who was willfully telling me this thing. This was poor communication between ministries. Because then I, you know, there's the equipment is here. It's just not within this ministry, but there's other than the Ministry of Labor and other. So, 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 so this is, this is the, the frustrations this, you have to this, do. This, this right. is why, this is why I started to get upset earlier because mm -hmm. I get annoyed with conversations where people say that the problem is Bajans or mm -hmm. the Bajan public or Bajan people this or Bajan people that. And yes, the politicians come from amongst us, mm -hmm. so they are a reflection of us. of us. That is true. But you know, you have people who really want to do a good job, mm -hmm. but when the people in leadership are not doing what is necessary to facilitate Correct. that. Correct. Good that is true. Being bond, done. Body that bond. is true. Yep. The head you know? hard, because yeah. in, in honesty, I didn't I, this is no badness to her because I felt like she was really literally trying to help. She mm -hmm. entertained me, she gave me an audience. But you can sense in the conversation she could only say so much. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, <laughs> and it I don't know what's going on at the other tiers. That's you know? no, so I agree with you. There's there's one of the laws they want change, right? I feel that if people that work in the government institutions are supposed to be able to speak freely mm -hmm. when they see things going on for yeah. too long, mm -hmm. that or law that they had over, you know, I, I would like to say something. But, but if I tell you, no, if people check, no, people would normally think that they would hear me say something, they'd be like, oh, we know that. Mm -hmm. But I used to try to keep it on a borderline way mm -hmm. as it don't push too far over the right. fence, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes these people would tell me things, I'm like, you serious? I'm like, yeah, like, or you could say it because it, part of it was in the newspaper, so mm -hmm. you might probably think you get a, a whiff of the scent of it in the newspaper, mm -hmm. but they can't speak their mind. So we need a cultural revolution. That's need, wrong. We need a cultural revolution. And I totally agree with you, Farai. There should be no limits in, <laughs> in, um, in what these elected officials can't, these not elected officials, but the, the, the public servants can say mm -hmm. because they are here to serve the people. And we are the employers, you know? And so we shouldn't have to worry about, I remember I was listening to something recently and they were talking about one, the sale of our assets and, and, and the way the minister would have spoken about it was almost like, I can't stay right now. I mean, you can't, you're selling my property. You can't and tell you me can't what you have. <laughs> Correct. What's going on here? So the cultural shift is to bring more awareness to the public. But then there needs to be the political institution that empowers the public to be aware of these things oh, so they can help hold them accountable. Yeah, man. So without a doubt, you've got to be able to, and, and that's where transparency comes in and where it's no longer, uh, well, they go or call a friend of mine who know a friend and who know a friend and this and that, and it can happen through the back door. It's no longer that. Now, the need for this cultural shift is why I support the... the um, new political parties because I'm not convinced that the traditional parties have the, the, will have the sense of urgency to make that political shift because as Farah was saying earlier in an, an earlier conversation, there's a sense of, you know, well, we can play musical chairs, this political thing, you know, and do the merry-go-round thing and mm -hmm. um, one, one leave, another one come in and then, you know, every two, every two Two terms. periods, mm -hmm. two terms, mm -hmm. a new party come, a new, the, sh the, the shift. Mm -hmm. So I feel like the new political parties have a role in pressuring the old parties to, as you say, change how they operate. Certainly. And make, mm -hmm. make it not business as, as normal. But you know, there are people out there who are like, man, third party is a waste of time in Barbados. Right. I think one columnist actually called them nuisances. Right. <laughs> yep. How you feel when you hear that? 
I understand it. Mm-hmm. I understand it. I mean, if you're, as we, as we would say, you know, several years ago, people would say that, you know, black people would never be free, you know, and to even think about freedom is an issue. But the, the landscape has to be broken into. And I think it's honorable that there are many people now in society who are stepping up to their civic responsibility. Even if they don't have the depth in some cases, at least they're recognizing that this, because when you sit down and hear the new parties, and I'll be honest with you, they bring really good discussion to the table. They change the landscape of what's going on or what has been going on in traditional draft board politics, which is what I would love to see. So I expect the pundits and, 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 the, and, the other, and other people to say these things. It's expected. Is, is there any fear on your part that all you might be doing is taking votes away from the opposition and giving the government in power a Certainly fighting chance? to get back Certainly in? Not. No, I'm here to win my seat. I'm here to sell myself to the public. I'm here to let the people that I am advocating on behalf of know that I want to do something on behalf of my people and behalf of my constituency. So that's why I'm here. Now, people will vote how they choose to vote at the end of the day, but that has nothing to do. I mean, that's, that's, I can't change that. And I am not going to speculate of how it's going to turn out. But I can say that I'm here to do my very best to engage the people that I knock on their doors and let them know, listen, here's our policies, here's our manifesto, here's who I am, why I'm here, and I hope you can see the need for a progressive future, and I hope that you would join me in this movement to transform our society. And I can't, so, I, sorry, go ahead. So to theorize on whether or not it's going to help the DLP get back in power, that's not why I'm here. Mm-hmm. Actually, it's the reverse why I'm here. We don't want to see no more bad leadership, and we don't want to see that level of disdain for the people that we are witnessing right now under any of the administrations. So that's the reason why we're here. Hopefully the public will get the opportunity to help to advance that cause. And I can't let you leave without addressing the claim that the UPP is an anti Mia Motley party. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Well, I guess um, I, what, you, what you have within, from the little that I understand, many people within parties shift around. You know, even the same mayor was, I heard, was in another party at one point. Barrow came out, the DLP came out of the BLP. The DLP came out of the BLP. Barrow was in the BLP before. Um, people who can't, it would a people who can't get what they see as priorities within the institution are there and who've decided to shift, you know, I think it's honorable if they decided to create something different because they can't get to see what they want to see happen within the institution that they're in. Um, I, I would understand it to be a political message in terms of people saying, well, they're, they're like people say, there are a couple messages, we are, we are funded by the DLP. People say like, really, you know, seriously? We're here to get the DLP out of office. This is why we are formed. This is why we offer ourselves as an option. You know, I, I can't speak to the hate me thing. I really don't know anything about hating me. It's not what called me into the party. As a matter of fact, I have nothing against me, to be quite honest with you. You know, what called me into the party was clean hands. We don't have a history. We're not in that Auditor General report. <laughs> we ain't there. You can't find us there. You can't point to us there and say, look what the UPP do or look what Lynette Eastman do or didn't do within that. So that for me is a, gives me a, a clean start. Um, so people will say whatever they choose to say. But even that though, no. I, mm-hmm. Again, this is what no, you're no, that's what you're Even that, people saying, you know, the country in crisis, knowing the time, time to, to get it out of yours. Exactly. That's why we have Lynette. When the $300 million was coming into the economy from the international business sector, that was led by Lynette. That wasn't led by anybody else right now within the Barbados Labour Party. Right now we're in an economic crisis. We need people who can actually negotiate. When there were negotiations that needed to be done with the OECD as it relates to blacklisting, not only just Barbados, but several other um, countries within the territory, mm-hmm. it was Lynette that was sent. She was the one who did that. So I agree. We need people who can negotiate on behalf of the people. So that's why we have Lynette, and that's why we want the UPP to be a part of that. Nobody else within the other institutions were there. None of the other leaders 
in my opinion, have a track record as Lynette has. No. So then there are other... So the issue now, like you would say, well, we have at least four members in our party who are ex-parliamentarians, who've already had the experience of parliament, right? So if we didn't have any, it would have been a problem when it's an, an experience. We have a few, oh, but the few you have was already in another administration. Well, of course, we've only had two administrations for the longest time. So, <laughs> that's it. so we have to have, so we do have the experience. You know, as it relates to that. And um, I'm looking forward to that opportunity as well. I can try to be as quick as possible quick. because it was something that Adrian kind of started it. Mm -hmm. You had a candidate that, and I completely agree with how Lynette handled it, because if a candidate is going to spew views that go against what the party stands for, they should be dealt with. And how she decided to deal with it, I thought was fair. Then you have another candidate that made disparaging remarks against someone from another political party. I don't even think an apology was issued. I am not sure about that. The Maria Agar comments? Oh, uh-huh. You don't think that she should have at least issued an apology for the distasteful comments that were made? Regardless of who they were made against, it doesn't matter if it was another political candidate or a human being on the street. It's you know, I, I used to watch these videos. There's a video that was circulating around mm -hmm. um, Facebook and social media mm -hmm. where they had this little bony fella that was beating up this fat dude. And the fat dude just flipped one day and lift you up and slam you in the ground and everybody was like, yeah, that's what bullies get, right? And you think that that's I'm the not, analogy no, you want to use? The analogy that I'm using that, from what I understood of this comment, it was done on a personal platform. It had nothing to do with policy. And when people are bullied consistently, they can flip because we're dealing with people. All you had to do was to check back through that thread, check back through that personal view, and recognize the level of bullying that was happening. And somebody went to a gunfight with a pen knife. I can't make a claim or a disclaimer for what happened there. I know nothing about it. But I'm not going to sit here and say that um, something that happened on a private person's private page requires that level of approach. I don't know. Let me show you. They would have to deal with that. All right. So <laughs> let me just get this right. Yeah, they would have to do you that. You do know. No, you don't know. Mm -hmm. You know. But here's my thing. And I, I don't want to put you in this thing. But here's my thing. Because if people say it's BHM for when they're doing certain things that they shouldn't be doing on the internet. The internet means I still in control of it. it the internet didn't type them words. Because when they see it, I was like, nah, this someone yeah, mimicking. Correct. Someone do this here and there's an edit. Mom correct. was like, no, it was actually said. And I think, think, I, about think the, it is, I think the public has She wasn't made, speaking to the actual person that she made the comments mm -hmm. about. She was actually speaking to somebody else. But I don't know who she made the comments about. I think what has happened is the people have made their outcry heard. And how they handle it is how they handle it. I can't speak on behalf the of The reason that. I had because an it issue... Wasn't, it wasn't a policy of the UPP. It wasn't a UPP platform. I can't speak on it. The that reason is, I had no, an I issue with it is because UPP is one of the parties that I expected to be different. I respect Lynette and how she carries herself and I expected it of the candidates that she has. So regardless of the gut of politics that has come for the other parties, I had UPP on a certain pedestal. But we can't put well, it on But I'm putting it all on you. I'm not putting it all on you. I'm putting it on, you. Put it on, you. Putting it on the yeah, leader yeah. and the candidate that made the comment because I don't care what the other candidates did. Right. I put UPP as this particular party that got this level of respect for themselves and their their opponents and operate a certain way. What I was so say, though, Crystal, what I was say is that the. My man here is a real quick learner because that's a real <laughs> political answer. It was. And he no put down. It was. That's a real smooth <laughs> yeah, political yeah, answer. He, he no he put like down. But, but I, I, I understand where you're coming from mm -hmm. in that, you know, 
Do people feel it, man? We tired of. I tired of the gutter politics. I just call them that as one that don't be in the gutter. We tired of this. We want. We want yeah, a party. We want a group that we can say, but they above. They are above the Correct. level that, of the gutter that we politics. expected before. Yeah. And so I understand so, so, your disappointment. So I, have, I, have, yeah. I have followed um, Maria's contributions in Parliament, and and I felt like she has offered a significant amount of proper. Um, um, to make up for the comments that she made? This is this is part of the culture that we have right now. That I thought y'all were here to change. She got me above it. Exactly. Right, like, you, like, for, not to cut you, but for I instance, agree with you. After knowing you, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I know that, but you know me as a Casper, so, but right. I still wouldn't swing that rope. But listen. Even so they know, knowing you as a as an aspiring politician and mm-hmm. want to get into it now. Mm-hmm. I would never ever, right? I know it's weird or not because we here in the ballroom, but I would never expect to hear that kind of thing. Somebody was coming and said, boy, you hear what he will say? He so, said, yeah. I was like, hell no. Correct. Not the Hebrew this is why I, says, I know. You mean some more, some more a Herudi politician? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, 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 a, it's supposed to be a wide gap. You're mm-hmm. supposed to know that. Look, I ain't going to get him that role in order to get my, my team across. I got a foreign, and foreign ain't even gonna do it. Mm-hmm. So if I is them to score me the Casper and says, oh, it's got somebody and tell somebody. If you met Farrah, jaw drop, you know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, when, you, when, you, when that come out, I was like, whoa. Yep. Like, that's like that's a knee shot. That's not even, that's way below the belt. Right. Mm-hmm. Which wasn't called for, as far as I see. It was like, certain things, I hear people tell me, certain, like, oh, you gotta learn to speak, but when, like, it, and me to go somewhere like, oh, yeah, well, oh, your father and your mother was out in the sheep pen or something. I would still feel that that's too strong of a response for something like that. And then you got to, somebody got to really say something bad, but me to really step that low. But it speak, it speak to what, what, what we expect or what, yeah, we, like, we want, yeah. we, we, what people calling for yeah. from a, a new party, you know. And so really and truly, the public may hold the UPP to a standard above right they got correct right. Like, i else. really like i know him especially I, after how the other candidate was dealt with her i thought okay this candidate messed up she dealt with it and she made it clear that this kind of behavior is not you, tolerated so i so thought that would apply this is apples and oranges and there are things that have happened i am just saying when, that how so, she handles so, but, but i think it is it is it is not there are two different situations totally and if you're in management and leadership you would realize that there are two different situations what people haven't done is actually go back and watch Lynette's video where she outlined the step by step as to what really happened and you would realize you mean with Charleston or with Maria? with with Charleston and I saw that video and I was I I was there for her I agree with it people would have said the statement had little to do with anything so you were talking about you were talking about Charleston so so, so you you can't mix the two of them there are two different things all together what I'm saying is how she dealt with the Charleston situation I thought was well done okay Everything about it was handled properly. Is a yeah. breach that happened with a candidate mm-hmm. and how it was dealt with. I applaud. Right. Then you have another breach, and it feels as though the how it was dealt with. Feel the same or same or like for no. instance, like somebody was a speaker of the house. Mm. Me the same or and. The old, the old, the elderly gentleman yeah. had to fight in court to get the money. And you the speaker of the house. You the man right. telling people, okay, we'll have a seat now with somebody else's turn. So when they turn on my TV and they see you and they study me, hold up, I can't get past the fact that this old man on crutches can hardly walk and you locking off your money. Right. Mm-hmm. And it got to go court in order for you to get your money. When you went court, they get the money, money. That should be the first step. It should be no, well, oh, well, if it's holding the money to do this mm-hmm. or this or whatever, free or whatever. No. There's no site there. Like, I can't give you a pass. So, right. So, so we, we, we trying to work harder up in the tank. And I know that these are, these are, the, these are the little issues that would then take away from the bigger picture. picture. Correct. Yeah. And it happens. I'm still here that people are people. People need to aspire to be bigger and better. And I totally support that 100% as it relates to how the situation is managed, I really can't say anything to that. Um, I do know that these people have been, there are issues that happened in the situation before I was involved, and I can't speak to because it. Because also you're not being a thought of race to speak on that behalf of 
that part. So I can respect that. Don't put your hand in the mouth for the phone to please the boy. Yeah? <laughs> you are you good with me. Yeah. That is good. You Because that's that's just what it is. I, yeah. I can't speak on it. Yes, no, you're saying George. The, 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 <laughs> the, the, <laughs> we 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 gotta up the thing and yeah. it is across the board. Um we have to improve on the messages that we give to our young people. We have to improve on how we interact with the, the, the society in, in general. And we have to bring ideas and no longer should we be bringing all this little battle because it feeds into emotions and negativity. We need to really bring ideas and we need to work towards changing the dynamics of our society. And, and that's why I'm here. Right. That's UPP? why the UPP is here. Don't have people you know? saying, you see what you say, you know? They made the same thing. Correct. Yeah. Well, you, you will hear need that. that look. You Correct. Will, you will That's hear not that. a good look. You will hear that. And um, it's understandable. And people have the right to express how they, whether they like it or dislike it. I think that that's important. You know, and I don't, I, I don't feel bad when a person say that they dislike something that, that happened. Um, but I think we all need to really have an opportunity to explore things on a bigger spectrum. So that's why I can sit here, even though I feel what you feel about politicians, I can still sit here and revise my position, recognize what we have accomplished as a nation, um, from where we have come from, where we are, know very well that we should be way further, but also not disregard the fact that we've come from here and we're here as well. So we need to consistently be able to revisit our ideas about the world and our ideas about even this whole political arena. And if we don't do it, then we're gonna to continue to create young people who will remove themselves from the institution. And that's, that's an issue. We need more people involved. And with that, yeah. <laughs> this has been another episode of The Boiler Room. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you've enjoyed our show. We've had Everton Haru Holligan of the United Progressive Party. We the happy thing. Who is up in the thing. The up in the thing. Yeah. Uh, my co-host Crystal Howell and Bajan Farai. Farai, yeah. you got anything to say to well, carry out? One thing though, he learned the punches where well, he learned how to cover up. That <laughs> stick and move, baby, <laughs> stick and move. <laughs> but hero, I wish you all the best. Like I said, get Google Maps. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean? You yeah. go, yo, for real, yeah, man. It's a matter of respect. So you know what I mean? Flex. I know you'll be in. I, I ask, like I said, don't be like the rest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ain't a good luck. Right. That's all as much as they go, I say. But so, I, I want to be like the rest who have done great work. Ah, good yeah. point. Because good we, point. We Let that be your slogan. Who have done great right. work. Let that be your yeah. slogan. So people will understand where you're coming from. Real talk. Oh. And bye. <laughs> Done talk. Boom. Boom. <laughs>